In this episode, there will be many end time prophecy updates and life updates from the end time, including important additional uh, tips for practical preparation in terms of uh, financial advice and uh, long term uh, food storage, the London Raven prophecy, and uh, hints from the pigs themselves. Additions to the timeline chart, a shocking example of how so-called Christianity is used to spread the doctrines of the devil, and much more. So the Tiberius system is collecting data, the tense is wrong here, from federal agencies, government, pharmaceutical firms to enable the officials to integrate a wide range of demographic employment and public health data to identify the folks they need. So in the Gospel of Luke it was Tiberius who was uh, reigning at the time when uh, Jesus was sentenced to death. So the Tiberius software was developed particularly for Operation Warp Seed, the dictionary definition of warp to bend or turn from the natural or true direction or course. Another definition of warp. To be or become biased, hold or a change in opinion due to prejudice, external influence or something of that sort. <coughs> and second, it seems I'm a bit late in forwarding you the invitation, but in New Mexico you were invited to safely sit on Saturn's lap. Uh, that's their actual advertising. And then you get a picture with him and uh, you make uh, a $7 donation for a good cause. <clears throat> and then the very same people uh, say, God bless America. I'm really not sure which God they mean. So Karl is the chief of the German social democratic gang. And he proposes uh, bug-style lockdowns for climate change. Luckily, we have a couple of healthy people around still like Joe. Since we have uh, gladly given up our freedoms, lockdowns will now be routine. And the most disturbing of the entire situation is the status of this uh, gang. This is one of the sister parties of the largest by members and parliament uh, seats. Uh, union. In other words, the main gang. And next, uh, actually, we may get information about the future development uh, of the events from the theater directors who <laughs> have been kind to publish them for us. This is a public document on their official website, the World Bank. So this document describes in detail the current bug theater, strategic preparedness and response problem. So it must be a typo, I mean program. So the important is that this is a multi-phase project, which was uh, well known before even the bug problem started, because uh, actually this is a set of documents, hundreds of pages of detailed program for the preparedness and response problem for each and every country, tailored for it for its infrastructure. All this uh, requires lots of work and integration between uh, many bureaucratic uh, departments because these are the practical exact steps for each and every country. These are not just general guidelines and then they tell the countries apply them for yourself the way you find appropriate. No, and they already have the exact exact steps everybody has to make. And to prepare all this, uh, you need uh, minimum many months, so they must have started at latest in 2019. And interestingly enough, in the very same paper, they tell us that on March 3rd, this last year, the board of executive directors endorsed the urgent uh, action in response to the pan uh, panic. And that was a week earlier, before the official international pan panic was declared. Not only according to the newspapers, but according to the text of this very same document as well. Here, this is a piece of the same document confirming that on March 11, the 
a World Health Organization declared a global panic, while more than a week before that, all the thousands of pages of documents were ready and everything was already in action. And when I say in action, I mean a really big time. They couldn't even wait a few more days to go through the bureaucratic procedures. Even before putting the official stamps, they were already making transfers worth millions to the local government for eligible expenditures on implementing their plan. Sadly, the other plan, which seems to be the main uh, highlight on their website, eliminating uh, world poverty, that hasn't received any attention since uh, the creation of the bank, probably. So the main point I'm making is that the theater directors uh, knew very well in advance. I'm sure they have been to a good tarot reader because there is no other way to find about these things in advance without a tarot reader, right? And the way we can benefit from this uh, publication is that uh, they have even given the exact timing when uh, phase one of their uh, multi-phase uh, theater will end. Here, clearly they are telling us when does the first phase end. Until 2025. And interestingly enough, this summer when I was making the first episodes of uh, this series, when I put all the prophecies together, my conclusion was also that uh, the proper biblical tribulation will start somewhere around 2025. This is in the first couple of episodes. Just to remind you uh, something short from those episodes is that Alexander Paramonov told us about this plan that uh, this phase now, not about the book, but about also the general situation which will be uh, escalating exponentially from now on. He also mentioned 2025 as a threshold. He meant it uh, more as the time they are planning to uh, absolutely demolish the finance system and establish the new one. But uh, that more or less... Uh, coincides with the beginning of the biblical tribulation and uh, also he said that is the plan but they may do it a bit earlier as well not everything is set in stone and in terms of the a little bit earlier remark one of the swine officials mentioned accidentally that they were expecting uh, way more resistance from the people in the document under question, there are also hints about this. Uh, they definitely uh, talk about the armies enforcing these policies. But most of the people uh, were much more cooperative than they expected. So here it is. Uh, we may complete the plan even before 2025. So, in the Tower of London, in London, the heart of the English monarchy, they have this uh, legend that the monarchy will hold only until the resident ravens do not take off and do not leave the tower. These uh, ravens are considered the guardians of the monarchy. What a funny coincidence, because the raven is symbolically connected to uh, ill fortune and deceit. Well, maybe that's why they care more for the resident ravens than the residents of UK. They have their special aviary and everything. Well, sadly, they clip their wings off so that they cannot uh, fly away. Well, let's see uh, this uh, policy of cutting off people's wings works successfully on the general population of England. Let's see if will it prevent the ravens from flying away at the right time. If you live in London, please keep me updated if you hear anything about this. So a viewer actually sent me very important additional information about the parallels uh, between Kalki and Christ. 
he probably managed to uh, identify the Antichrist in the Kalki story, that would be the demon Kali. Kali uh, should not be confused with the goddess Kali. The word Kali simply means black in Hindi. So the goddess Kali who has black skin is an incarnation of the Supreme Lord Bhagavan. While the demon Kali, he is from hell, he is uh, not godly. So both have the same name, but should not be confused. So the interesting thing is that uh, in the story of uh, Kalki, at the very end, uh, Kalki or Christ wins victory over his main opponent, and that is the demon Kali. And the way Kali tries to evade him at the very last moment before he is slayed, is by evaporating just to re-emerge again in the end of the next Kali Yuga and trouble the people again. And this is a very interesting parallel with the Muslim variation of the biography of the Antichrist, who at the end, at Armageddon, he tries to evaporate and escape Christ unsuccessfully maybe because uh, this is the last uh, Kali Yuga anyway and his services uh, won't be required further according to some sources. So I managed to get a physical copy of the book with the prophecies of uh, Gottfried from Van der Berg. That's the first book, by the way, it uh, came out of print in 1994. Basically, you heard the gist of the prophecies in the episode about uh, World War III. But at that time I didn't have the full text and now that I have it, I see that there are a few more things worth mentioning. In terms of finances, uh, he does not recommend any long-term savings accounts or insurances. So all of that will be obviously relevant. And he makes a very relevant point about the time of inflation. He says, uh, let's not forget what usually happens in such uh, scenarios. The savings of the people are destroyed and they make everything possible to save the banks. And as a result, Many people who have uh, mortgages or any type of debt, they won't be able to make their payments anymore because of the inflation, the crazy time, uh, redundant jobs, uh, useless salaries, which cannot buy you anything. So he says that uh, during this transitory period of the revolutions, when the inflation will be increasing steadily, it won't be like, according to him, a sudden crash, but a steady increase over, I don't know, months or years. So during that time, uh, people who have mortgage on their house, they won't be able to pay it. And basically the banks will take possession of a uh, whole lot of houses so many that it will be impossible to expel all those uh, people from their houses. So what uh, they will most likely do is they will make them uh, tenants. They will possess your house, uh, make you their tenant, and then the burden of the rent will be even more unbearable, of course. That's why he recommends uh, to keep your money only in a very liquid state so that you can access them at any time very quickly to buy uh, tangible things and provisions, uh, which will be the only thing which uh, matters once we enter the proper tribulation, which seems to be still a couple of years ahead, according to his prophecies as well, because we have not seen yet the war in the Middle East, nor widespread uh, warfare in Africa, which he also predicts, nor the sign in the skies, planetary parade or whatever they call it, which will be the big sign for the big war, nor the destruction of uh, New York, which he also describes before the war. This will be like a proof for his prophecies if it happens as he foretold it. Now, it is very interesting what he says about the timing of the war, and that was written in 1994. He says the war will happen sometime around 1998. 
And then he adds later on that there is a, also a slight chance of another timeline and the war will come actually much later. He says the chances of uh, that development are very slight, but still I have to mention them. So probably this is exactly what happened and this is the most likely explanation for that entire group of prophecies which talk about uh, many years, like 25 or something like that, between the pre-tribulation and the tribulation. And the other very similar uh, type of prophecies uh, to which uh, those of uh, Gottfried belong is that uh, they don't even describe the Great Tribulation, they only describe the Pre-Tribulation. So most likely, at this time, we took the uh, second most likely scenario, and that is to have the two Tribulations together, instead of uh, having a span of a couple of decades between them. So just to wind up with his recommendation on finances, he says uh, that uh, some people, uh, due to tax considerations, they have uh, debts and profits at the same time and they don't, uh, they make such tricks to pay less taxes that they have to stay in debt and pay it off gradually, although they have uh, lots of profits which uh, effectively they don't want to declare. So he warns that in this situation their profits will be destroyed when the inflation starts, but they will be still liable for their debts and they may also get in trouble. So he advises that even though currently for tax considerations it may look as if it is disadvantageous to pay off all debts, in long term that could be a better policy. Now, next, he gives lots of importance on uh, building uh, secret shelters and hiding places because uh, he, as many others, says that uh, the worst in terms of wars and invasions and revolutions will start so suddenly that you may not have time or materials to build then these uh, hiding places for you or your food. And with the food, he explains how vital are the hiding places because in most countries what will happen is um, the sides of the wars and revolutions will reverse very rapidly and some army will come or some gang and your house will be searched on a regular basis they will just take all the food they can find and this may happen very suddenly so if you don't have like double wall, walls or whatever other things you devise, you may end up losing uh, the most precious thing, uh, which is uh, your food provisions. So he very much stresses on uh, having a couple of such uh, hiding places in case uh, some of them get discovered or exposed uh, when earthquakes strike. And of course, uh, he gives uh, top priority to moving to a safe area in the countryside. He gives map only for the German-speaking regions. For all other regions, of course, uh, he says to avoid all cities, highways, major railways or areas in proximity to military bases. He also stresses the importance of relocating to your safe place before the sudden big storm starts. Because, uh, first of all, the roads could be closed. Second of all, even if you arrive there, your place might be occupied by strangers from some city who did not uh, have a hut of their own. In addition, he warns that if one um, lands in a hiding place uh, in emergency, even though one may have some provisions and a um, reasonable amount of durable goods, Still, when one hasn't lived there properly, it is sure that uh, sooner or later he will find out, oh, I, this, uh, I need this or that small thing, and without this or that small thing, the entire life becomes very difficult. And not all small things can be foreseen as necessary in advance. He also saw in his visions that there will be a type of people who, when the storm starts, 
on immediate notice they will simply fly off to faraway places which according to current perception may look uh, kind of safe like Australia or New Zealand because these type of countries usually tend to stay away from military action but he warns that uh, there will be no difference over there it will be the same and these uh, people who fled in hurry would have been uh, much better off if they would have uh, invested their money and energy in securing something in the remote mountains of their own country Now, <clears throat> a few additional notes on uh, long-term food storage, additional to what uh, has been already said in the episode about preparations. You have to calculate that you will need food for seven years. And uh, if you put on the menu almost every day <laughs> soup of rice and uh, some lentils and beans inside, you will be surprised uh, how little uh, rice and lentils you will need, just a couple of kilos per month. And it's good to have some oil uh, to it, of course. Oils are not very durable. At best, their shelf life is two years. However, shelf life is actually best before. And in the case of oils, um, they are actually eatable twice their shelf life. Well, the flavor will be less. But of course, if the prophecies uh, come true and you still have oil at that time, it will taste... Uh, even expired much better to you than it tasted before expiration. And then in this uh, video I have yet another list of uh, panaceas suitable for the end times, out of which the turmeric and many other spices and uh, shilajit stand out. Turmeric has uh, countless benefits like purifying blood, antibacterial, antiseptic, etc. I forgot to mention in that video that it also can be put directly on wounds. It provides kind of a disinfection. It's a tribal uh, remedy or so to say means to dress wounds on the go. So I would recommend adding uh, turmeric and shilajit to your end times provisions list. Now, there are plenty of offers uh, that you buy survival food with even 10 or 20 years expiration date. And it all seems very attractive, but when I took a close look, uh, I noticed a uh, few questionable moments about it. Before I even start with those, if you need really a seven years supply of that, it will cost tens of thousands. For a family, hundreds of thousands. So the first question which came to mind is how come they have all these uh, dishes with eggs and meats and lots of oil and cheese, but all these things that I listed, they are not at all durable. What kind of chemicals do they have in there to make them stay uh, good for 20 years or are they really good? Some of them even advertise that our food is made from 100% organic uh, uh, vegetables and ingredients. Uh, really, and the heavy preservatives are also organic? Here in Europe, this type of foods are more popular compared to America, I guess. But the bottom line is that uh, this is just uh, wheat and sugar. Certainly there is no harm of uh, having a couple of packages of this as well. But uh, if you just uh, have real wheat and sugar, that will cost uh, about 20 times less it will not have uh, the loads of preservatives and can be used in many other ways like uh, for example to make sprouts from the wheat or even to grow plants i would recommend in general foods like chia because it uh, multiplies its volume many times when prepared also you can grow plants from it and you can even grow sprouts from it and one last point about this uh, survival meals, packages, uh, basically they are powdered, just add hot water. Many of them are uh, non-vegetarian and according to the Nina prophecies, uh, the people who eat meat will have additional problems during the tribulation. Uh, when they crank up their black magic and activate all the particles or whatever contaminations they have been implanting in the people in all kinds of forms including the food 
those who eat meat will be more affected because the fruits and vegetables are also polluted. But they are not really our close relative species, while the animals, especially the mammals whose meat some people consume, the genetic modifications, they are accepted as something owned by our body and is adopted by it. So this lady Nina, she herself is a Christian, she doesn't consider eating meat to be a sin, but she uh, has become vegetarian after allegedly seeing what awaits the non-vegetarians. It's uh, severe, noisier and many other symptoms, that's how she describes it. And Pramonov also, he just said that he highly recommends becoming vegetarian. He did not say it is sin to eat meat, uh, but he simply does not recommend it for other reasons. According to Ayurveda, meat is not harmful, it is only consciousness lowering. And according to the set material of uh, Jane Roberts, he doesn't uh, really preach being vegetarian actually, but on the other hand, uh, he does admit that it is better to be vegetarian. So as I'm trying to find Polish tea and my start, I tried a few things, mainly after going again through the material from the inner prophecies. So I added the so-called aliens, which will be something like, I don't know, black magic or holograms or some sort of uh, deep fake blend technology. So this is at least the third prophecy, if not the fourth, which describes them that they are actually evil spirits and they will indeed uh, heal the sicknesses with uh, which they have infected the people before that in exchange for their soul. So this I had before from reliable sources because the Nina prophecies are not for me at least yet officially verified prophecies, but I didn't know where to put that on the chart. So instead of putting it random, I took at least the timing from her and that's uh, during the pre-tribulation. And then I added the man-eating uh, dinosaurs in the Great Tribulation. Again, uh, they are there in the Vyacheslav prophecies, which at this point I consider verified. I just didn't know where to put them on the chart and she said that it will uh, be at the time when uh, all the waters on earth turn uh, blood red. And then again, based on Nina, I have shifted a little bit the timing of the World War III. Somewhere in the first half or the middle of the pre-tribulation, instead of the very beginning of the pre-tribulation. Because I figured out that, that the other prophets uh, who always put it in, in the beginning of the pre-tribulation, it's because the, for their local area, that's when the exact worst starts. But it is not so necessarily in a, a planetary scale. And Nina explained very well that um, First of all, the natural disasters will hit uh, worse in the West and only somewhat later they will also come to the Eastern Hemisphere. And then shortly after that, the uh, big war will start as a mere culmination of the various uh, civil wars, which will hit almost all countries on Earth. And by the way, now I make the connection that uh, uh, she and uh, Gottfried von Werdenberg actually say that uh, this uh, big war will have will start uh, involving many countries first in Africa. But since the wars in Africa are always uh, underreported or not at all reported at all, and that's why for the people in the civilized uh, world it will be indeed as uh, the prophets describe it because they see what uh, the way people see it on the ground at that time is that it will start uh, first in the Balkans and before that um, they will be stirring in the Middle East because these are the areas which are above the radar in terms of uh, news coverage and Africa Nobody seems to care. It's extremely puzzling to me that uh, the 
type of um, civil disturbances like uh, Black Lives Matter, they have an energy to devastate uh, black neighborhoods in America, but uh, they don't have time to spare to turn the attention of uh, the public to the problems in Africa. And then I also added the sinking of Japan. There are many prophecies about uh, that. It seems to be something which uh, most likely is in the cards. I just didn't know where to place it. And again from Nina, she says that it will be uh, in the pre-tribulation. And then this uh, major asteroid impact, uh, which, uh, as she mentions, hitting America if certain conditions are met, that also, she says, uh, will be uh, midway during the big war, which uh, more or less means, again, somewhere mid pre-tribulation. So I hope you find this uh, chart helpful. I have not seen anything that comprehensive in any other source. If you have somewhere to publish it in your own language, commercially or not, it is free, you can do so. And also we can make together a translation. If you wish to help me with uh, translation to your language, first of all, check the description of this uh, video in case already uh, somebody else has submitted the translation for the same language. If you don't see it uh, listed, it means uh, you can simply write in plain text all the items uh, one after another and uh, send it to me by email. should be found in the description of this uh, video. And then I will uh, make a, a colorful version in your own language, which you can distribute anywhere you wish for free, as long as uh, my uh, credit logo remains. So something else from the book of the uh, Austrian seer, that's how it is called, a seer from Austria, uh, breaks his silence. He says that uh, because he prophesies for the German speaking territories only, he says that uh, nuclear weapons will be used during the Great War, especially in Germany and uh, Czechia. However, contrary to the myths uh, spread by the mass media, he sees very, very healthy people after the nuclear war. Nature recovered very quickly and there were no noticeable uh, long-term radiation problems. On the other hand, he does mention specifically the areas where uh, nuclear weapons will be used because the people in those areas will need to stay in shelters for a long time. He says for weeks in a row. There is a link in the description about uh, the myths spread by the mass media about the nuclear weapons and the truth. Well, it's not uh, so difficult to figure out that people will be very healthy in those uh, future times, even without being a prophet. It's so simple, there will be no hospitals like now, so of course people will be healthy. It's exactly what I observe with cats. Uh, the cats in the wild, they're basically healthy. And those who are uh, what people call proper pet health care, they're uh, sick much more often. So I did a test, I thought, let's see what will YouTube show me as first results when I do search. And this is uh, what came up. Half million subscribers, the video seems to be very highly rated. And a young smiling chap assures us that um, we should uh, take enthusiastically part in all government initiatives of uh, fixation, etc. Because, you see, he says, uh, the righteous Christians, he pretends to be Christian, they will be raptured, according to the Bible, even before the mark of the donkey is implemented. So the true Christians, like himself, he said, we don't need to even think about these things. So I will be listing his cons so that you don't fall a victim of such uh, antichrist uh, preachers pretending to be Christian ministers. 
Actually, the rapture is mentioned in the Bible, but there is no specific timing pinpointed during the tribulation. So some people believe it will be in the beginning, in the middle, or in the end. Some even believe there will be two or more raptures. It's okay to believe in anything, but it is ridiculously preposterous to say that all the godly people will depart with the rapture, because if one uh, follows even the most uh, basic Bible narrative, there are definitely uh, godly people during the time of Antichrist. They are prosecuted by him. They refuse the mark. So either there are multiple raptures or the rapture is after the mark of the donkey or the rapture doesn't take all the good people. So the first argument was a total con. The second one, even more obvious, he says that uh, the mark will be a conscious choice and not a trickery. Really? I mean, is he talking to people who have never, I mean, who don't have a chance to open the Bible? I mean, even without opening the Bible, everybody knows that the devil, he is the guru of all liars and trickers, and his main weaponry is deceit. And he will exactly trick the people into believing that uh, he is Christ, and that's uh, how he will make them take his mark. So the con in this uh, argument is to say that because the choice is conscious, it is done without trickery. No, you can consciously fall victim of deceit, like this guy who makes the video did. And I was like suspicious, the video is highly rated, then I looked at the commentaries, they are all negative, people are asking him if, if he works for the Gates Club, because it is really difficult to believe that person who has read even part of the Bible would uh, think of such things. And then Chubb continues uh, that the current uh, fixation campaigns cannot have uh, any relation with the mark of the donkey because that in the Bible is about buying and selling. So these are completely different things, he says, really. And then with the certificate here, uh, without the certificate, uh, they are already talking about refusing you public services. How far is it that uh, they will refuse you even banking services? Not at all far. This is, of course, so ridiculous, but uh, the disturbing thing is that uh, most people are superficial uh, listeners nowadays, and they will fall for such uh, shallow talk. The chap even continued further, he says, according to the Bible, and the mark will be a physical tattoo or something on the forehead or on the head, and uh, fixation has no physical mark at all. And that's true, actually, because the fixation is not the proper mark. However, he, he is just not giving you the correct quote from the Bible, where it says that the false prophet, he will set up the system for marking even before the arrival of the main Antichrist. The young chap from the video even argues that it is nonsense to talk of any mark of the donkey at this point anyway, since uh, the temple in Jerusalem, where the coronation of the Antichrist will take place, is not even built, and the uh, mark of the donkey uh, will be during the time of the, uh, the Jao, which is after the coronation. Now that's true, but again he is giving the wrong quote. Uh, the correct quote from the Bible is the verse where the false prophet introduces the system, the technical system and the biological system in the people for eventually accepting the mark. Because I can see that they are taking no chances, they are planning it uh, very carefully, and it's not uh, gonna be that uh, they will uh, uh, put it on the table as a choice, the way most people understand it. Only the intelligent uh, will even see the option of the choice. Most of the people will have the feeling that they have no choice because their biological body is barely functioning and they are heavily depressed at that time. Their willpower will be almost non-existent. Hmm, I wonder why. Was it because of the preparations? Hmm. And then the other type of extreme uh, pressure will be the lack of uh, good food for those who refuse the mark, and also they will be separated from uh, their families. It will be very, very common in those days. Uh, the wife takes the marks, 
the husband doesn't or vice versa or brothers and sisters and when i say separated it doesn't necessarily mean physically even if they remain together and live together uh, still during the tribulation the gap uh, between their realities uh, will be widening so rapidly that it will be very very obvious